watching part three of PC Whiz Kids gaming PC build guide. This is an all AMD machine that I've been putting together in part one and part two of the video series that I've created here. And of course, now that we did all the building, we put it all together. Here it is up and running. She is a beauty, white on the outside, blue on the inside. You know, I added some additional lighting in there as well, right? From NZXT, they have this little lighting, LED lighting that you can put on the inside of your case, which is very nice. It kind of highlights all your components, gives it a nice glow. Um, the Cooler Master Scout 2 Advanced Case, the Ghost White Edition, has some nice LED fans on the front already, so it complements the additional light that I added. So that's why it looks like this, right? So again, you can spend a lot more money, but uh, you know, if you want a good gaming PC build that gives you great performance, these are the components that I've put together. Okay, starting of course with the AMD FX6350 6 core CPU running at 3.9 gigahertz, all the way up to 4.2 with the turbo enabled, of course, and overclocked, it can go all the way up to 4.6 gigahertz. Here is the motherboard, the Gigabyte UD3 board, the 990FX top of the line chipset from AMD. The memory, of course, running the Patriot Viper 3 memory, low latencies, higher bandwidth. We want that good combination, right, between the both. So if you can get a CL9, CL10 memory and then high bandwidth, that's great. And of course, from Diamond Multimedia, we have the Gigahertz Edition HD 7870. Now, this is a well-balanced 2 uh, gigs of GDDR5 memory. It's 256-bit bus uh, and bandwidth, it's going to give you lots of performance without breaking the bank. You can spend a lot more, but why? The 7870 performs really, really well, and it runs cool. As you can see here on idle, the temperature is 32 degrees Celsius, very respectable. The fan is hardly moving. I mean, it's very quiet, very quiet. Now, going back to the processor, the CPU here at 3.9 gigahertz, you can see there on full load, about 50 degrees Celsius on defaults, and the GPU, okay, so the 7870 on full load, 53 degrees Celsius. If I overclock everything, okay, we're talking about the CPU now is overclocked at 4.6 gigahertz, okay, and the memory a little bit overclocked there for higher bandwidth. And um, temperatures are just a little bit higher. Yes, they did rise up to 64 degrees Celsius, but that's still very respectable. And the HD7870, again, we upped the core clock to 1085. So, you know, we're, we're increasing the performance out of this machine without necessarily stressing everything out too much. On the synthetic benchmarks with 3D Mark Vantage, here we've got the overall system score. Now I've separated it into CPU scores. So here they are, and here it is how it compares to other processors running at default clocks. And now here's the GPU score, again, that we just saw a second ago for the graphics card, so you can compare now the graphics card. On 3D Mark 11, here are the graphic card only scores because that's what 3D Mark 11 is really testing, so you can compare that. And on PC Mark 8, the professional edition, I did the home and the creative benchmark results again. So you can see that and compare with other benchmarks that I've done with other systems. You get a good idea on how well this machine performs. Six core CPU, way better than a four core, great multitasking capabilities. It's going to take you into the future later on when more applications and games come out that make use of more cores. And again, on Ada Extreme Edition here, you can see here the different types of benchmarks that it provides with respect to the CPU and the memory, everything working together. So you can see how the FX 6350 positions itself compared to other CPUs. And again, this CPU is priced at about $139 US, okay? So think about that for a second when you're trying to compare with other processors out there. How much more money do you want to spend? Now, on game benchmarks, very respectable results here. Of course, if you put everything maxed out, it stresses the system. On high 4AA settings, though, at 1080p, beautiful smooth graphics, no issues there. Alien vs. Predator, again, ultra high settings, you know, Frames per second are not an issue. 70 frames per second, wow. So, I mean, depending on the game, depending on how much you enable the settings, of course, you're going to see different results. So, on gaming, there's really no issues here. You can run things all on high and, um, you know, 
Look here on Tomb Raider, for example. These are the settings that I'm running. Ultra, okay? And now we're running benchmarks. You can see there the minimum, the, ma the max, and the average. So we're talking about at least 60 frames per second. If you run it overclocked, you get a boost of another 10 frames per second, at least something like that, depending on the game. Here on Lost Planet 2, same, same idea, right? High settings, DirectX 11, rank to B, average was 52 frames per second. Overclocked, I gained another five frames per second. Okay, so it all depends, of course, how much do you want to overclock? Do you even really need to overclock? If you're interested in knowing more about the reviews that I did on the components that are in this machine, you can click on one of these squares here and it'll take you directly to the review of those other components. For a full parts list and pricing, click here at the top of the screen there and it will take you to the list that I put together from all these manufacturers. And i like to thank them all, of course, for providing the components. Comment below, let me know what you think. And again, thank you for watching.